it's a beast, you know. Uh, for me, I can win, but uh, my heart is with, with Dugas. What was his name? His heart is with Dugas, his brain is with yeah. Pacquiao. Uh, oh my gosh, this fight, I call it later, I say 10th. 10th round knockout. Yeah, 10th. Well, no, I don't say knockout, I say stop it. Stop it. Yeah, stop Ugas. it. Ugas. And then, uh, First of all, I want to wish Errol Spence <laughs> good health and a speedy recovery. Ugas is no bum. He's going to bring it. He's going to yeah. come. It's his opportunity. He's going to step up. He's going to come. But back you by TKO. Back you by TKO. Back you by TKO. But um, it's going to be good. Oh, yeah. I see Pacquiao edge in this fight out. Huh. Ugas is a tough guy, though. He does come to fight. And he's always in great shape. Throws a lot of punches. You know, he's in and out. So. Um, you know, anything can happen though. Anything can happen and, uh, you know, this is a big opportunity for Ugas. You know, you get the legendary Manny Pacquiao in front of you. Un gran, una leyenda, a un legendario. Pero Ugas es un excelente boxeador y él se prepara con ciencia y sé que lo va a hacer well, al 100%. And I know he's going to do it at 100% because he's disciplined. Early on, uh, Man Manny will, won't have a problem exchanging and, uh, and getting into that firefight with you, Dennis. I don't see your Dennis being able to catch Manny with anything early, but later on in the fight, it will be a problem. It, it will be a problem. I'll go on record for saying that the later this fight goes, it will be more of a problem for Manny than it will be for, for your Dennis Ugas. Hey Ringsiders, what is going on? I'm your host, Boxing Subjective Observer, and welcome back to Ringside Stories. Feel free to like and share. Don't forget to subscribe to the channel and hit that notification bell if you enjoy the content that helps with the YouTube algorithm and inspire us to make more quality content for y'all. Thanks a lot. This is part two of the Pacquiao vs. Ugas preview. Now I will say first that this fight is going to be overshadowed by the Pacquiao Spence fight that didn't happen and possibly never will. Not sure yet on how legit the eye injury is that Errol Spence Jr. has suffered, but the element of timing sure plays a great role in all of this. Keep in mind that Errol Spence Jr. is a fighter under the PBC banner who are in the midst of possibly finding a new broadcaster. So PBC is trying his hard out to sign big names to entice the boxing audience and entice themselves. You can cross-check that with the Canelo vs. Plant situation. I've pointed out on many occasions how the PBC has been playing politics ever since its inception. Why is this relevant? Because regardless of the fight's outcome, the PBC is looking to continue to be relevant, i.e. looking for ways to monetize their events and fighters. At 42 years old, Manny Pacquiao will surely not be considered the future at welterweight. The future at that weight class belongs to Errol Spence Jr., at least from where the PBC is sitting right now. By putting Jordanis Ugas in front of Pacquiao, the PBC secures one of boxing's biggest names for at least one fight. Should the fight be competitive or if Ugas wins, the PBC might use this fight to press for a rematch. In the case that Manny wins, the PBC might then match him with another of their fighters, that being Errol Spence Jr., for three of the four major welterweight titles. So from my perspective, it is important to factor this in simply because it can affect the scoring of the fight. And that's not too far-fetched as plenty of boxing matches are scored horribly by judges we all assume should be doing a proper job judging, including a recent fight on a PBC event. 117 to 111 for Jermel Charlo. That aside, the Manny Pacquiao Jordanes Ugas fight has what it takes to be competitive and dramatic. It's happening this way, so that's, this is good. I mean, I'm so excited um, for this uh, for this championship fight. I don't care if this is the champion or I'm the champion or no, but uh, let's finish this uh, fight first, and then we will we will see who's the uh, title holder. holder. Manny Pacquiao has always had the desire to offer fans a good fight and Jordanis Ugas has proven to be a solid fighter. So what do these savants actually bring to the table? Well, Jordanis Ugas is a 2008 Olympic bronze medalist and a 2005 world amateur champion, meaning he has solid fundamentals which could be helpful against Manny Pacquiao. Ugas will be the taller man with a 2 inch reach advantage. Other than his dimensions, 54 Milagros biggest assets are accurate counterpunching, body punching, and physical strength. If this turns into a dogfight, Ugas will have some advantages on Pacquiao. The Cuban has four losses as a pro but has never been stopped. 
and on fight night, Jordanes will have H on his side. More on that later. As for his weaknesses, Ugas has pretty slow feet, will be stationary, hand speed is not great, and is fairly one-dimensional. As former Ugas opponent and former WBC welterweight world champion Sean Porter stated, He has one style. He, he likes to be more of a power puncher and, and, and use a come forward style. If that's not working for him, then he doesn't really have a backup plan. Once you've gotten uh, out, out, uh, outclassed and, 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 and the game plan was not in your favor, you, you have to recognize that and make an adjustment. Then again, Jordanes gave Sean a great fight, which a lot of people thought Jordanes won. Now we know Manny Pacquiao for his speed, his power, his combination punching abilities, yet in my opinion, Pac-Man's greatest assets in the Ugas fight will be his footwork, hand speed, and ring IQ. Ugas will probably come forward, be in front of Manny, and so with his ability to move in and out with his faster hands, Manny should give Jordanis plenty to think about. The questions Manny will have to answer, however, how much has Manny Pacquiao left, how well has he aged since his last fight, and how will Manny Pacquiao cope with the inactivity. So for his weaknesses, Manny will give up reach and height, has been inactive for over two years, and his age, which plays a big factor as the fight goes long. Even in the Thurman fight in 2019, Manny faded in the later rounds. And so two years later, we will see how the Filipino copes with that. But father time is still undefeated. Although it sounds noble to break his own record of being the oldest welterweight to ever win a world title, the reality is Pacquiao is 42 turning 43 by year's end. Training is not the same as a fight, and Manny is facing a seven-year younger man who fights for more than just himself. I'm a fighter inside the ring and outside the ring. People know that I'm a fighter for my country, a fighter against the dictatorship in my country. I fight for the freedom of my people. I fight for the freedom of the political prisoners that are in jail right now. Patria y vida, country and life. That is why I fight and what I fight for. Now all politics aside, and assuming Manny Pacquiao doesn't turn old overnight, I see Pac-Man start fast utilizing his in and out movement, his speed, and Ugas will land here and there. The Cuban will come forward all night long, but I think Manny's hand speed and craftiness will give him the edge. So again, assuming he doesn't turn old overnight, assuming he does not get hit by a surprise KO, which happens in boxing, assuming the fix isn't in, I see the fighting pride of the Philippines winning on points, making history yet again. Regardless of the outcome, I'm hoping for a great fight and may the best man win. Whoever wins that fight, I think Pacquiao is a hell of a fighter. To still be competing on this, on this level in which that he is, at the age in which that he is, speaks volumes of his pedigree. Um, Ugas, he, you know, he's been going through it. He's been kind of tested and then kind of pushed back, you know. So I think it'd be good. I think it'd be good for both parties. You know, if Ugas was to beat him, I think it would be a good passing of the torch uh, to a certain extent. Um, if Pacquiao was to beat him, then shit. That's what I, that's what's up, Pacquiao. You know, I like Pacquiao. If Ugas beat someone, would that be like the biggest win for Cuban history? Uh, like boxing? I think, I think that would definitely be the biggest the, the, the biggest win in in, in, in Cuban boxing probably this history? year yeah. oh, in okay. history okay. in general for, for Cuban boxing. Uh -huh. um, Pacquiao has done a lot for not just boxing, but just for his country itself. Uh -huh. You know, so you got to take all that into consideration. I think that matters. What are your thoughts? Let us know in the comments below. If you're new to the channel, we make content about combat sports and boxing from a unique point of view. So if you enjoyed that type of content, feel free to subscribe, hit the like button and switch on the all notifications bell. That's how you'll know when the next fire video drops. Welcome to Ringside Stories. If you've done that already, you're awesome. You already know that you are the true undisputed world champion. Till next time Ringsiders, this is your host, Boxing Subjective Observer with Ringside Stories. Thanks for watching and have a legendary day.